What's up, guys? It's been a while. Uh, today, we have a ton of new changes to show you. Uh, since you last saw the game, we made a ton of progress, and I just want to jump right into it and go through all the big changes we made step by step. The build we showed you in the last update video was a really good proof of concept, but a lot of the systems in it just needed more fleshing out. So I'm gonna start by going over the matchmaking system and how it changed. Personally, this is my favorite feature. It's the one I'm most excited about, and I really think it's innovative. So I wanna really sell you guys on the vision here. In the build that you saw, it was a one versus one player game. There would be two players that queue up and matchmake into each other, and then they spend the entire game playing against each other back and forth. And that's really similar to like a traditional like digital card game matchmaking. That's what a game like Hearthstone or Magic or Legends of Runeterra, uh, they all use that traditional like two-person lobby system. It's basically a tennis match. Auto Battlers upped it to an eight-player lobby system. So instead of having just two players in a game, you'd have eight players in a game. And it was a little bit of a battle royale format. Last player standing wins. So one of the big fundamental questions we had to answer for our game is how many players are in a game? Uh, I was thinking a lot about, you know, is it better to keep it 1v1 and have that like back and forth with a lot of counterplay? Is it better to do the eight player lobby system where uh, it's like a battle royale format and then, you know, you don't feel as bad because it's not like you finish dead last or first, you can finish somewhere in the middle. It feels pretty good to get like a third place finish, a second place finish. Whether it's 1v1 matchmaking like Hearthstone or an eight player lobby like Auto Battlers, both systems had pretty similar problems. Sometimes you just have a really complicated turn where you need to click a lot or reroll a lot or switch a bunch of units out. Or, you know, even in a 1v1 game, you just have a really hard decision. You wanna take some time to think on it. And it was really stressful to have this short turn timer that would kinda force you to misplay sometimes. This problem was even worse on mobile when you needed to do a lot of inputs within like 30 seconds and you just couldn't, you didn't have the time. So on one hand, these traditional matchmaking systems felt too fast at times, but on the other hand, they felt way too slow. In Hearthstone, it's really annoying to get roped and not be able to do anything for a minute at a time while you're waiting for the other player to go to the bathroom or something. And in Auto Battlers, it was really annoying to have a really fast, easy turn and then have to sit there doing nothing for 45 seconds while everyone else in the lobby finishes. On top of that, both systems had a really high barrier of entry to just start a game because you lock yourself into this 30 minute social contract where you're not really allowed to leave. If I have to go to the bathroom or answer the door or you know your kid starts crying or maybe you only have like five minutes in between bus stops, you don't really have the ability to commit to like a 30 minute game because if you leave halfway through a Hearthstone game for a couple minutes, you skip your turn, you just lose. Same thing in an auto battler. It was really important to us that people could play at their own pace, and especially on mobile, that they could play comfortably. So if two player lobbies don't work, and eight player lobbies don't work, what about infinite player lobbies? What if you fought a different opponent literally every fight? If there was one player that was just really fed and they had this unstoppable build, you don't have this looming stress about having to queue into that player knowing you're gonna lose. Uh, if you get crushed by somebody, you'd know that you'd have a new opponent for the next fight right after. The more I thought about what an infinite player lobby system would look like, the better of an idea it seemed. It would let us completely remove the turn timer from the game, so there wouldn't be any stress about not having enough time to make a decision. At the same time, you'd never have to wait on somebody else to move forward. You could just do your decision, and then the game moves forward to the next step. And when you're ready for a fight, then we would matchmake you. So the, the idea uh, that I have is essentially to not matchmake before the game starts, but to start matchmaking mid-game multiple times. So you could start your run just by yourself, start going through the bazaar, buying cards, getting your build, and whenever you're ready for a fight, then and there the game would matchmake you against an opponent. So you're not committing to a social contract beforehand. Uh, if you wanna play the game for a few minutes uh, and then leave because something came up and finish it later, you can do that. If you wanna grind and just play really quickly, you never have to wait on other people to keep progressing. You can just play at your own pace. So whether you're a player that wants to spend a lot of time on each decision and get acquainted with stuff, like a new player that wants to spend a lot of time reading things, or if you're an experienced player that just wants to play quickly and make a lot of inputs and, and, and grind through more games, uh, it was better for everyone to do a system this way. So how would the win condition work in a world like this? Because in a two-player game, you have one winner and one loser. It's pretty easy to score. 
And in an eight player lobby, you just have a battle royale system. So, you know, whoever doesn't die uh, is the winner. That's pretty easy to score. But when you have infinite opponents, how do you pick a winner? And uh, the first concept that we kind of jump to is scoring it kind of like uh, a draft run in a lot of digital card games. So either you get to 10 wins or three losses. If you get three losses, you get kicked out. If you get 10 wins, then you won. That's the, the maximum number of wins you can get in a run. And uh, we really felt like this system was intuitive, pretty easy to implement, and uh, we decided to put it into this build and try it out. We've been really happy with how this system works, and we really think this is gonna make our game like the only PvP strategy game that's comfortable on mobile. I can't overstate how problematic those turn timers are for having a good mobile experience. Sometimes you only have a few minutes to play, and we have the first PvP strategy game that accommodates that. I know that this system is pretty different from what you guys are used to, and it's gonna seem unfamiliar to a lot of you, but I encourage you to keep an open mind, and I'd love to hear your thoughts about it uh, after you see it in action today. A big area that we improved in the game is making people have to switch out their items as it progresses. In past builds, there wasn't much of a reason to keep switching out your items, because all of them were balanced with each other and reasonably equal power level, so after you owned like 10 items or a full board, there was no reason to switch out to new ones because they were supposedly as strong. If you have a full board of items like this and then merchants offer you new ones, there's not much of a reason to like switch out to these items unless they're stronger. And in our game, we didn't have that trade. Other games like auto battlers, they show you stronger things as the game progresses. The scaling system that we had involved upgrading items you own. So you'd have one here and you'd just keep adding buffs to it and it would have more effects. You'd add poison to it and more damage. You'd make it get used faster. And this scaling system further discouraged any switching of items because if I have this item with three upgrades, it's now better than all the items that the merchant will be showing me. There's no reason to switch. It'll make me weaker. We really want to encourage churning through items and switching them in and out rather than discourage it because that's how players change their strategy. We want players to have to adapt their strategy based on what they're seeing. But if they are never incentivized to buy what they're seeing, then they never have to change their strategy. So it kind of defeats the purpose of showing them items throughout a whole game. One of the most common ways that games encourage you to keep switching your stuff out is by showing you things that are just objectively more powerful than what you had before. But they usually do this by dividing all of their game assets, their items or their units or whatever it is, into different pools. And they say, these are the ones you see early game, they do a little amount of damage. These are the ones you see mid game, they do more. And these are the late game ones, they do even more. And when you divide up all your items like this, it means there's a lot less diversity in things that can happen. At the start of a Battlegrounds or team fight tactics game, there's only like 10 to 20 units that you can possibly see. And that limits how many possible ways there are for the game to play on the first turn. Whereas if all of the units were in the spawning pool, then there's way more possibilities for what can happen. If we can avoid it, we wanted to not divide our item pool. We didn't want to partition it into early, mid, and late game. We wanted to, for the most part, keep all the items showing up throughout the whole game so that there's just a, a huge range of things that show up and strategies look really weird. During one of our design sessions, Andre came up with a solution that was even better than partitioning our item pool into early, mid, and late game. We thought we would give the items levels. When the items have levels, it means they get stronger each time you see it. So in the early game, the dagger does 10 damage. In the late game, it does 50 or 100. It does a lot more. A lot of other games differentiate their items or units or cards by how big the stats are. And that's all that's different between them is they have bigger stats. And for us, we wanted the effects to fundamentally be different. We didn't want to just be the same card, but with bigger numbers. So each of our items has its own unique effect. With item levels, you see these unique effects in a seemingly random order. In early game, you'll get a different combination of things offered to you and you put them together and see how it works. And as the game progresses, you have to switch them out because they get sort of outdated and they just can't kill anybody anymore. They can't keep you alive anymore. Each time you go to a merchant now, their items are slightly stronger than the items that you have already. So it's pretty exciting to go to merchants. You always can get something better than you have now. We wanted to implement this theoretical item leveling system, and we quickly realized that our numbers had to scale bigger than they did in the past. Usually player health would go like 100 to 300, and items would deal like 5 to 20 damage. But if we want to have the items get stronger every single day, every single turn around in the bazaar, then there needed to be at least like 10 levels, maybe as much as 30 levels for each of the items. 
So if you have an item that does five damage and we want to scale it on 30 different steps, we can't make it go, like even just going up by one, it hits 25 damage. And that does like a quarter of someone's health if they're at 100 health. It was not easy to scale the items unless the numbers got bigger. In practice, while we play our game, we've realized that we can get away with having really big numbers because a lot of the decision making isn't based on the differences between numbers and cards. We don't think it's very fun to pick cards because their numbers are bigger, because they do a lot. We think it's more fun to pick cards because their effect is cool, what it actually does, not just because the effect has a big number. In our game, there's no reason not to do 100 or 1000 or 10,000 health, because if the numbers get really, really big, it doesn't really matter, because there's no situation where players have to like do the math on if they can kill someone. They never have to do that. They don't have to make decisions based on math. The first set of numbers that we're testing is for most items to increase by about 25% strength each time they level up. And the game has 30 total levels right now. So at 25% increases, an item gets about twice as strong every three levels. If this was the level 1 through 7 versions of some sword item in the game, then the first one might deal 10 damage, and then the next level increases by 25% about. We're not doing fractional numbers, so it would be like 13, then 16 damage, 20, 25, 31, 39, uh, about. Um, so every time you level up three times, it's about a double in the item's power strength. As the items get stronger, the player's health also gets stronger, so you don't still kill people with the early game items. The health increases by about 25% as well. They go from 100 health to 125 to 156 and, and so on. Right now, this system feels like a pretty comfortable rate of items becoming outdated and having to be churned through, where every few rounds players feel like their items aren't impressive anymore, they're not getting the job done, and they have to go find a better version of items or noob items that just have stronger numbers. When each level increases the strength by 25%, the growth is pretty exponential. So some items go from 10 damage to like 1,000 or 10,000. The numbers can get really big. And in practice, it feels really cool because you feel like, whoa, I'm doing so much output. It's really fun. But also, you don't really need to do the math to make all your decisions. So it's just fun without any more complication. One of the hidden downsides of doing an exponential growth curve is that even though at each level it gets the same proportion stronger, it's just really not exciting at the early levels. When an item goes from 100 damage to 125 damage to 156 damage, it feels really big jumps. It feels like, well, my item's doing a lot of damage now, I'm really ramping it up. But if your item does 4 damage and then you upgrade it and it does 5 damage and then you upgrade it and it does like 6, I mean, really you're growing at the same percentage rate. But that does, doesn't feel good. It doesn't feel like, whoa, my item just got strong when I go from 4 to 5 damage. We're thinking about making the item scaling a little bit linear in the early game, where it increases by steady jumps. And then as the game goes on, then it starts to become 25% increases. We think that the linear jumps in the early game might make the scaling feel a little bit more fun. So if this was our level curve for one item, and the damage was increasing exponentially, then the graph looks a little bit like this where at the start the steps are really tiny, each, each level only gets a little bit bigger, and then as it gets on the steps get really huge. And we want these levels to be a little bit more exciting because they feel too small. So in order to make the early levels feel a bit better, linear scaling would be something like a steady increase at a certain rate, and then the exponential curve takes over. I mean, it wouldn't be exactly like a, a dip right there, but we want to make these early levels feel like they're significant jumps, even though at a pure 25% increase they wouldn't be. Since we came up with that theoretical idea of items leveling, we've put it into the build, and it's what you're going to see today. And it's had a lot of benefits that made the game better. It makes players want to keep churning through items, they no longer feel like they can just sit on the items they have, and they never run out of things to do in the game, because everything keeps getting stronger. Also, item levels make it really easy to see the power level of a card on the surface, whereas before you'd have to like read the card and evaluate it to see its strength, and it was really hard with all the stacking upgrades. Uh, now you just look at it and you see the level number. So when I have level 3 throwing knives, and then I see level 7 throwing knives, I don't even need to see the damage number to know that's going to be stronger than what I have. Adding item levels to the game and making the numbers a lot bigger really solved the last problems with the core of our rules. Now that players had things to do throughout the entire game, we felt like everything just kind of fell into place and we're ready to focus more on like card design and class design rather than working on the rules anymore. It was a really big step for us.
Even though auto battlers were themed around familiar IP, I didn't really feel like I learned anything about the world of that game by playing them. I felt like auto battlers sent me to a chessboard instead of on an adventure. I really wanted to go on an adventure. I wanted to be immersed into the world of the auto battler more. It was really important to me that this game didn't feel mechanical and instead it felt like an immersive adventure. Like you, you guys are exploring the world of the bazaar, you're meeting merchants. And it started this thought about the journey of a day and kind of how a run progresses in between your fights. What we had in the last build that you guys saw was just four encounters in a row. It was like four choose threes in a row. And that is very mechanical. It's a lot like what an auto battler does. So for this build, we wanted to kind of build out a framework for having a journey throughout a day. So you would start in the morning, maybe birds are chirping and you go to some merchants and then maybe you encounter like a special event. Oh, maybe you find like a treasure chest. But the idea is throughout a day, it's more like a run in a roguelike deck builder where there's like a series of events, a series of different encounters and it feels like the day is progressing. Uh, in fact, with the final build of the game, we're even hoping to be able to do like different lighting conditions so the day gets darker uh, as the run progresses. And I really think that this is gonna make the world feel more alive than other auto battlers. Let's go ahead and jump into a game so I can show you guys what the journey of a day looks like. We have our new homepage here, a little bit cleaner than what we had before. I'm gonna go ahead and uh, pick a character, jump into a game and not have to wait match make with anybody that I play on my own fucking time now. So a lot of what you guys are seeing is still very placeholder. The entire top half of the board is going to look different during shopping and these toys aren't fully rigged and modeled out yet or anything. And there's like a compression issue with all the merchant profile pictures. So they look a little jagged right now, but all this stuff will get fixed in the coming weeks. Now I just want to open up this dev build for you guys to show you kind of in development uh, what it looks like and how we're thinking about these things. So when it comes to the journey of a day, uh, over here on the left, we're gonna kind of see you know, what event you're on and what's coming up. If you click on it, it'll expand. And you know, right now we don't have that many events in the game yet. We just have merchants and uh, monsters and an upgrade event. But you'll be able to see here on the left how you have merchant, 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 a monster fight, more merchants, an upgrade event and then the player battle at the end of a day. Once that finishes, you go to the next day. So, uh, you know, for this first event, uh, I can go to Ayla, she sells weapons, I'll buy this dagger, and now I've moved forward to the next event. You know, I'll go to Kev, he sells defensive items, get a tea set, we go on to the next day, we go to Ayla again, get another weapon, and now we're at the monster event, right? Where I can go ahead and do this battle. So the, the day keeps moving forward. Uh, the lighting conditions of the board will change in the final build to kind of remind you guys that you're progressing throughout a day. And, uh, you know, once we add all the bells and whistles and sound effects and all, all the little touches and, and the, the game board looks different during the shopping phase, once all that stuff's in there, uh, this will really feel more like a, an immersive world, a lot more than any other auto battler uh, in the world. Uh, you'll really feel like you're there in the bazaar, you're going on an adventure each run that you play. And it's not just like a mechanical chessy numbers game where, uh, you know, you're just like doing math the whole time. So this monster fight is something new. You guys didn't see this in the last build, but we noticed that if, if we want to have this like journey of a day where you're doing a bunch of stuff before the player fight, you still want to get feedback on how your decisions made you stronger. So, you know, to... to have 10 phases of buying before a player fight would mean that it's hard to get an idea for how much stronger you're getting. We need to give the player more regular feedback. And also on top of that, if every single fight was against another player, then half the people who play our game are going to lose most of their fights, uh, which isn't that fun. Nobody likes losing. So I really wanted to fix like these two problems. And I thought monsters could do it. Basically, I wanted to inject more wins into the run. So everybody got to feel more like a winner. You get some monsters to beat up on, but more importantly, it gives you immediate feedback on the buys that you make, right? If I just do a couple things and then I have a fight, I can immediately see how those couple of choices affected my build. So uh, monsters really are a natural fit for that. Uh, we're just using some old art that we had for a lot of these, but we're going to really flesh these out, make them flavorful. Each monster should be having items that are kind of thematically aligned with what the character is. And uh, yeah, we just think it's really going to add a lot to the game, make every run feel different. Uh, you know, hopefully just let's just introduce a bunch of cool monsters that you run into. 
I just think they add a lot to the game and uh, happy to have them in there. One other feature I want to touch on real quick uh, while we're at the end of this first fight uh, is the replay feature. This is something we didn't have before. Uh, you know, when, when a fight happens and a bunch of stuff is going off in real time, it's really hard to follow what's happening for a number of reasons. So it really felt like at the end of a fight, we wanted to give players the chance to replay, see how stuff played out again, uh, to get a better idea of how their build works and also how their opponent's build works. Uh, but also, you know, eventually to be able to just download like a clip and share that uh, on social media if something really cool happened during a fight. Um, so if we go into the replay here, you guys will see it just plays out. Uh, same way, you can pause it, you can keep it going, and you can go slow-mo if you want. And you can also speed it up and just go through it very quick if you want. But uh, yeah, I really think this feature is just going to add a lot to the game. It's something we really wanted after playing last build and just happy to have it in there. This still looks pretty basic, but uh, after you kill a monster, they're going to drop a reward. You get a choice of what you want. I'll take another dagger. And uh, even if you steamroll a really easy monster, it's pretty important to watch how the fight played out because the damage that you take from that fight is going to be something that, that sticks up until the player fight at the end of the day. So you don't want to take too much damage from monster fights, even if you know you're going to beat them. You guys might recognize Nufu. He was an encounter in our last build of the game. Uh, he used to be one of the merchants you could pick, but now he's kind of like a special event. So uh, as you go through the run, every time you do a fight, you'll end up leveling up. And on certain levels, Nufu's going to show up and offer you some hero powers that are going to make you stronger. Uh, you can have one at a time in this build. All of this is still kind of, you know, I don't want to say up in the air. We're still like very open-minded uh, with what's going to be the most fun for the game. But for now, we have the one hero power slot. And uh, yeah, we're right back into more merchant events. I'm going to go ahead and buy a few more things. Um, I don't know, let's buy like uh, Caltrops, sure. Let's see what Kev has. He's got some stuff. And sell this old sword. Uh, bandages. And he has little things. Let's get a coin, play the economy game a little. Now we're at the upgrade event, and this is a, this is a very placeholder. Uh, I think this is, this might be Forja, who you guys saw in the last build, uh, the blacksmith. That 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 is who I think we'll use for the upgrade event. But the idea here is, you know, in the final version of the game, we're going to have this big anvil here, and you can drag your cards onto that, and the card gets upgraded. Uh, but for now, we just have these squares that you can drag stuff onto. So I'm going to go ahead and take Lion's Cane. Take it up here, level it up a bit. But yeah, I've done my stuff. I've gone through a bunch of events. Now I'm ready for the player fight. You ready up, you find an opponent within a few seconds every time. And we're off to the races. So right now we don't have that many people in the server. It's just the developers, there's very few of us. If you queue up at the same time as somebody else, you will both fight each other, like, like real time like PVP. But if, uh, at least right now in this early dev build, before we have too many players, uh, what we have is uh, ghosts. So when you go, when you have a fight, the server will save the build that you had at the record that you had. So uh, you'll always be queuing into people with the same record as you. That's kind of the other key part of this matchmaking system. So if you're on day three, you'll fight against somebody else on day three, and the matchmaking will prioritize people who have the same record. So if you're two and one, you're way more likely to queue into a two and one than a one and two player. Uh, so yeah, if you're winning more, you'll have high, harder opponents. So I wanna make it really clear that with our matchmaking system, you're not just gonna be fighting against ghosts, far from it. Uh, in fact, almost none of your fights should end up being against a ghost, ideally. Just right now, we have so few people on the server that it's very unlikely that two people with the same record are gonna queue at the same time within three seconds. But when we have a bunch of players and all of you guys are in the server, this won't be an issue. And we want the vast majority of your opponents to be real players that you're fighting in real time. So we're not going for like asynchronous gameplay or anything like that. Uh, we really want this to be a true PVP game. We really want it to feel that way. So now that I fought the other player, I've moved on to the next day. I heal up to full again. And we're at the beginning of day two, right? I have one loss, zero wins. If I get three losses, I get kicked out. My run ends. If I get 10 wins, then I won. We get the maximum number of wins. And yeah, that's kind of the journey of a day. I hope that kind of gives you guys an idea of 
how it's going to feel moving through stuff. I know we're missing a lot of like the polish and a lot of the assets that, that'll really make it feel more immersive. That's all coming later. This is kind of the core mechanical gameplay stuff being in there. But I think it's a good starting point and a good framework. And, you know, even in the tools that we're building that let us design the game, uh, we're able to edit the journey of a day uh, very quickly. So once we have a bigger variety of special events, uh, we really hope to kind of break up like the the merchants. It, you know, rather than going like merchant, 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 um, we'll kind of slip special events in between. So the game should always be changing, should be a bunch of exciting encounters, a bunch of fun choices. Uh, I really just think this, this, this will take auto battlers to the next level and, and make it feel more like an adventure. In past versions of the game, the economy never felt quite right to us. The way that players get money in a game and like buy and sell their items, we felt like the prices and all the complex money wasn't adding anything that made the game better. A lot of other games use money or mana to limit which options a player can do among a pool of things, like they pick which cards from their hand they play, or pick which things they buy from the store. We thought that our game was most fun when we just showed players three things, and after they pick something, the game moves on. So they never have to sit there staring at a screen picking multiple things. It's a lot faster and more fun, you see more stuff. But if you don't let them pick multiple things on a screen, the idea of money just stops to make as much sense. In past builds, when we gave the items a bunch of different prices based on how strong they were, one of two things happened. Either players couldn't afford things, and it felt really awful because we're showing them three options and they can only afford like two of them or one of them. It's like not a decision anymore. Or they could afford everything because things weren't expensive. And when that was the case, money felt like it wasn't even part of the game. People didn't pay attention to it at all. Money never felt like it was detracting from the game but it definitely seemed too important. Like everything had a cost number written on it on the surface from like three to $15 and their gold would go from like five, $10 to like 40. So there was this really big money management part of the game, but it wasn't adding anything. We could have just made everything cost one or two and it would functionally play the same. Money fits well in the theme of a bazaar. We definitely want to be trading money between merchants and it's the best way to clear your board We're selling items. We want players to feel like they get something back when they get rid of one of their old items. But mechanically, it doesn't need to be a big part of the game. So in this most recent build, we've simplified the economy a lot so that players only pay like $1 for every single item and their money only ranges from like one to 10 in most usual situations. So they never have to worry that much about managing their money and they never have to worry about like not being able to afford things randomly. It doesn't come up very much at all. Each time a player goes to a merchant, we want them to be able to afford what they see because we want them to pick something from that merchant. We never want players to show up and then not be able to afford anything and then leave because every time in the past that's happened, it was just not fun. In past builds of the game, players would see three merchants in a day and each one would sell them an item. And the items would take like $3 to $10. And then at the start of the day, we just give them an income of like 10 or 15. And this was just all way bigger than it had to be. So in the most recent version of the game, players have starting money of like five, but then each day they only get $1. And then at each merchant, they only spend $1. At the end of the day, there's a special event where they can sink as much money as they have into leveling up their items. So people can always afford to buy items when they go to the different merchants. And then whenever you get rich, you buy income items, it really just helps you sink money into leveling up your items. And this feels really good to us because it means that players can choose to get rich to level up their items, but it's not a mandatory play pattern of the game. In the gameplay in this video, you'll see that the economy is just a lot simpler than it was in some past builds, and we think it's a change for the best. Now they have an idea of some of the stuff we changed, I'm going to go ahead and play a full run for you guys so you can see it in action. I'm going to go ahead and hit play, pick a character, and jump into it. Alright, so beginning of a run, I have seven money, empty board, and uh, a bubble cannon most importantly. Doesn't quite work yet, we can't pop the bubbles yet manually. You can't spam click it, so it's a start. The drum doesn't do anything yet. Um, all right, so I have three merchants in front of me. I'm gonna go ahead and pick one, start off my build. JJ has everything, so I'm gonna start with him. There's a lot of different directions to go. I have, some, I have a bunch of weapons this time around, some big ones, some small ones. Sniper rifle gets stronger if it's my only weapon, so I think it's a good starting point. 
So now that I have sniper rifle, it's my only weapon. I probably don't want to go to Aloy to get a second weapon. It would make sniper rifle worse. So I'm going to go ahead and go to either Andy or Kina. She's a pacifist. Let's go to her. All right, we have some options. Um, hmm. All right, let's pick up Stash. It's going to turn into two items, and then we're going to hope for the best. I'm going to put Sniper Rifle to the left of Stash, just because I'm not sure the order these resolve in. I think it's left to right. Uh, let's go to Kev, pick up some defensive items to go with this Sniper Rifle. And I think I like Life Preserver. We gain 60 health once a fight if we dip too low. And yeah, let's just jump into a monster fight right away. I hope Sniper Rifle can take it down. Seems like it gets one shot by it, so it's a good start. He's just got a couple basic early weapons. Uh, th these monsters are just, it's all placeholder stuff. We just threw some in very quickly so we could uh, start testing, but it'll be a lot more polished over time. And the, don't worry about like the, how these like portraits look right now though. There's like a compression issue. So they have like jagged edges and this one's not rigged fully yet. Um, it'll all be very pretty when it's done. I can't like, un un <laughs> I can't overstate how much shinier everything is gonna be. Um, all right, so as a reward from Void Lord, I can choose between two of these weapons. They're both level three, so they're pretty strong compared to the other stuff I have. I'll pick up a revolver, why not? Get a new food, pick a hero power. Um, hmm, whenever you use a weapon, burn one. Now, I don't have to commit to the sniper rifle if I don't want to because it is only level one, these other, I, you know, it's gonna start getting outscaled, basically. After every fight, you level up, right? So this blue number here shows what level I am. I'm level two now. It means all the items I'm gonna be seeing are level two. Um, but yeah, I think a good starting point is cooldown reduction. You can't really go wrong with that. Let's keep going to Kev and try to do like a controlling Vanessa build. I've never seen something like that happen, so uh, hopefully it works. So we've got an Iceberg. I could get rid of the Sniper Rifle and get more weapons, I guess. I'll start with Iceberg. It fits so perfectly. Let's see what Andy has. Hmm. Well, some of these items sell for more after, they're, after I own them. So I'm going to go ahead and pick up Coral. You can see the price tag down here. Sell that. Uh, right now, if you skip, you get one money. So skipping is definitely not a bad choice. Usually you can justify swapping something out though, because the items you're seeing are higher level over time. Let's see what Kina has. Turtle shell is a decent defensive item. I don't know, I'm not really feeling any of these. I'm just gonna go ahead and skip. And now we get to level some stuff up. So, I have this sniper rifle, but it's gonna be pretty bad as long as I have these other weapons. But I think it's gonna be a good call to just sell the weapons and make sure the sniper rifle is as spicy as it can be. Um, and yeah, I'm just gonna go ahead and level it up even so that it does more damage. The first upgrade right now costs zero and then the cost goes up by two each time. So zero, two. Uh, I could even sell this coral in order to level up one more time. I think I'm, I'm actually gonna do that really want the sniper rifle to be strong. I haven't really done a sniper rifle build yet. Let's see how it plays out. All right, so now that I've finished my whole progression through a day, now we're getting into the first player fight. Right, fighting against too fast, too furious. Ooh, and he has a, like a high attack speed build, which is pretty good that I have Glacier then, or Iceberg, definitely slows him down. I don't know if I can kill him. Oof. Yeah, my sniper rifle is just too slow. I think I'm gonna die first. Unlucky. All right. We got wrecked. It's okay. We can lose a couple times. Let's go to Kev, see if there's any other defensive items. <laughs> this freeze effect lasts a little longer than it should. Um, yeah, yeah, sure. I'll pick up a better life preserver. Why not? This one's higher level, heals for more. Let's see what Kev has. Seeing a lot of the same stuff over and over. Let's see. Oh, why not? I'll try fishing that. Let's see what JJ has. He has everything. Got a water wheel. Use the right item, dual cast. It's pretty good a sniper rifle. Let's me spam it. Let's take that. I'm gonna try to make a sniper rifle build. I don't usually go this route, but 
I'm curious to see how it plays out. This goblin, <laughs> a bunch of slingshots are pretty bad against Iceberg, so that's good. We're doing okay here. Get fucked. Um, all right, I got some more weapons. Now, if I if I skip this one, I don't make money. And they are pretty high level, so it's pretty tempting to grab them. But it's gonna make my sniper rifle worse if I have them. So what I'm gonna do here is actually just sell my uh, life preserver. And I'm gonna buy this torpedo. And I can just sell the torpedo, if anything. Let's see what Kina has. Your large item cooldowns are reduced by 28%. It's pretty good with water wheel. But is it good enough? I'm down to try it. Okay, uh, wheel combo, let's see what Kev has. Some of the items don't level up, so like Iceberg for example, it's pretty much level 2 the entire game. This effect doesn't scale. Most items will have an effect that scales, but not all of them. Uh, let's see, Kev. Tripwire. It could be good, but it's another weapon. It's gonna mess with sniper rifle. I think I'm just gonna go ahead and skip this. And let's keep stacking this sniper rifle because uh, I don't know. I just I'm in on it. Let's see what happens. I'm gonna get farmed on my first run. Maybe I should have picked a broken build so that I look good on camera. Who knows? I'm fighting Rainad's ghost. It's okay. I believe in sniper rifle regardless of how handsome my opponent is. Yeah, I get fucked. All right, so we have a one-on-one -on -one record. You can see it up in the top left. We're back on the first encounter of day three. And yeah, I'll keep going to these pacifist merchants uh, in order to keep my sniper rifle going. Let's see, double the damage on all your weapons and reload them. It's kind of interesting too. I don't really have room for another large item though. I think I'm gonna go ahead and get rid of this captain's wheel, pick up a stash, maybe see what's inside later. Yeah, I'm not really feeling any of these. Let's go ahead and... Ooh, actually, Chum. At the start of the fight, gain 60 max health, which is a lot. And then your opponent uses all their weapons. So one thing about the way max health scales right now is it scales off a percentage. I'm not saying that's how it'll be in the final build, but in this build, that, that's how it works. So if I get 60 health early, it's actually going to increase the amount of max health I get every time I level up after this point. So the, the earlier you start stacking max health, the better. I'm going to go ahead and pick one up, mostly because Chum combos with this Iceberg over here. So forces them to attack me, then they get frozen for a bunch. I only have a little bit of space, so I'm going to go to Andy and get a small item. I'm pretty happy with my other ones. Uh, these are weapons, so I'm not going to get them. Messes with sniper rifle. I'm going to go ahead and pick up Pearl here. Uh, it has a little bonus when I sell it. Um, I can't sell it on this screen, unfortunately. That's something we got to change. Um, it has a sell trigger, so I kind of want to, but whatever. I'll just jump into the fight, see what happens. Oh yeah, this fishing rod is not going to get me. <laughs> uh, yeah, the monster balance is still all over the place. Wait, we're, this isn't like a, a demo build that we're sending out even internally yet. This is just a developer build, so it's, you know, a lot of the balance is like in the works. We haven't gotten to a lot of the stuff yet. We actually just got this version of the game a few days ago, and we've been hard at work, uh, you know, improving the design. Um, but yeah, I'm gonna go ahead and kill the monster, and go on to the next one. Um, got a little bit of a mini bug in how it shows the max health that you gain, but I'm not worried about it. I'm gonna go ahead and sell this pearl. That's gonna upgrade my item, which is awesome. It upgraded exactly the one I wanted to upgrade. And, yeah, you know, these items aren't great for me, but I'm going to pick this up anyway, because I can sell it later. Why not? Free money. Um, let's see what JJ has. JJ has everything. Not reason. Yeah, I'm not really in the mood for any of these. I think I'm just going to skip this, actually. I'd rather have a coin. Uh, let's see what Andy has. I like Clamora. It's not bad. You get dazed for seven. Dazing means that their stuff charges half as fast. So dazed seven means they're dazed for seven seconds. So for seven seconds, everything charges half as fast on their side. Um, yeah, not really feeling these. Level up zone. I'm just gonna keep stacking the sniper rifle because honestly, it's <laughs> we're still messing around with the economy numbers, but this is a pretty good strategy on this build, is to go like in on one weapon. 
There's a lot of broken builds. They're all broken in different ways. All right, we're gonna go ahead and jump into a fight. We have the Chum Iceberg Glamour Softlock with this sniper rifle to hopefully kill them. I feel pretty good about it though. Ooh. Luckily this iceberg's stopping him from just killing me. He has a throwing knives build, which is pretty effective. All right, we get the win. We're at two and one, we're going into day four. And let's see what else we can find here. Clamor is another item that doesn't level uh, right now. Um, I'm pretty happy with the stuff I have. I don't know, I have a pretty synergistic build. Life is good, don't really feel like swapping stuff out. I might pick up the seashell. It sells for two. By the way, some of the art uh, is still not finished in this build. So like, you know, this is what like a polished finished piece looks like is Iceberg. Um, and then Water Wheel is still like in development, right? So we just have the rough color phase of the card in the game. Same thing with Seashell, it's not like polished yet, but um, same thing with Citrus. So you guys will see a lot of cards like that, um, but you know, the, these polished items are, are, that's the kind of quality you can expect for the art. Chum is finished as well. Um, but yeah, I, I think I'm just gonna, I kinda like Citrus, I don't know. It seems like it might be good. I like this Daze item too. I guess dazing them and freezing them is a little bit redundant, right? Like if I freeze them for seven seconds and they're also dazed, it doesn't matter. Dazing just slows the charging, but freezing stops it completely. So I'm just gonna pick up uh, Citrus here, move on with my life. Uh, ooh, the left item has dual cast. Now that is spicy. It's pretty good to sniper rifle. So every time sniper rifle goes off, it'll go off twice. But every time Water Wheel gets used, it uses itself twice. So like when Water Wheel goes off, it's gonna activate Sniper Rifle like four times. It's a pretty good combo. I don't know if it's as good as like my freezing lock thing that I have going on, but Star Chart's a pretty good card. I guess what we could do is just sell these little items, get Star Chart in there, and see how it feels. If we go against somebody with a fast build, the Iceberg is still gonna be pretty good. Slowing them down. All right, Void Lord has <laughs> ball-themed items, I guess, uh, for now. Um, all right, get sniped like the rest of them. Ooh, Powder Flask is pretty good. Because it uses my weapon right at the start of the fight. But it uses the left weapon, so I can't have Star Chart and that. Right? They can't both target the thing to the left. Hmm. So which one's better, shooting an extra time or shooting fast? I think shooting fast is better. And this takes up less space. Maybe I can fit up an, uh, fit another item later on. Ah, whenever you use a weapon, burn three. Whenever you use a weapon, daze two. I'm not really interested in those effects because I only have one weapon and it's kind of slow to charge. I'd rather just make it faster. Let's get the cooldown buff. Let's go to Andy. We have a little bit of space. I don't really need more items, but I like Clamora. Um. I'm not really feeling any of this stuff. Hmm, Citrus or Clamoro? So yeah, Clamoro is like redundant with Iceberg, that's right. So let's, let's pick up Citrus, why not? All right, now we're ready to level up. Let's stack this uh, sniper rifle more. My water wheel is pretty low level at this point. It's only level three. But since it's using other items, it kind of like pseudo scales along with my sniper rifle. Um, I think that I do want to look to upgrade that though, so. Yeah, all right. Let's move forward, go into our fourth fight. We're up against Pygmalion, who got bodied. Go ahead and play that again in slow motion for those of you guys that missed it. I can't even, I don't even have the time to make it slow motion. All right, BlizzCon champion plays. Kev, what do you have? Coral, armor. Damage reduction is pretty tempting to get. Is that better than Iceberg? It might be. Hmm. It's They're both like good against the same thing, right? If my opponent has a bunch of like little weapons that are hitting me a lot, this is gonna freeze them a lot and this is gonna reduce a ton of damage output. So they're both good. I'm gonna get rid of Iceberg just for a change of pace. Uh, free up a little bit of space as well. Ooh. Okay, Lighthouse is pretty nutty. 
the start of the fight, permanently reduced cooldowns by 17%. That's a lot of percent. Hmm. Now, I lose my defensive item if I do that, because I don't want to get rid of this powder flask. I think using my, my weapon right away is pretty important. Man, on the other hand, if I got rid of both of these and I just had Lighthouse instead, maybe that's a good way to go about this. <laughs> Tough call. I think I'm just gonna go ahead and get rid of Coral Armor, and we're just gonna go in for a aggressive build. Pole sells big items. Let's see, what does he have? Another Lighthouse, another Iceberg. We don't really need any of these things. Let's go ahead and fight Medusa and see what happens. All right, beginning of the fight, Powder Flask goes off, triggering the Sniper Rifle. That's why we did 420 damage. Nice. And yeah, feeling pretty good about this. Hopefully we don't take too much damage from, uh, from this enemy. Okay. All right, so what is our reward? We can get a Life Preserver, we can get an Arbalist. I don't think we really need either of these things. I'm just gonna move on with my life. Let's go to Pole again, see what he has. Uh, Trop, Vanessa's Ship, Trebuchet. Don't think I want any of these. I think we're just gonna keep on going. These cooldowns are way lower now, which is nice. Maybe Keen has something nice. Eh, I mean, it's a higher level lighthouse. 18% cooldown instead of 17. Barely makes a difference, but we'll try it right now. I'm down. Some of the scaling is still a little bit underwhelming, like level to level. That's just a balanced thing. We're gonna, there's so many cards in this, like, you know, each class has like 100 cards and then each of those cards has 30 levels, all of which have to be manually defined. So it's actually a lot of design work uh, to do a pass. Um, sucks to be Ben, is what I'm saying. Uh, all right, level up. Let's keep stacking the sniper rifle. I, I do. I did pick kind of like a one-dimensional strat a little bit, but it's all good. We could sell the citrus and upgrade the sniper rifle even one more time, but I think I'm just gonna keep it. You know, in case somebody does a ton of damage, maybe it could get us out of the out of a bad situation. All right, two HP. Oh my god, am I gonna get one shot after leaving her at two? Not like this. All right, we got him. Ah, oh, Rain Ad Mirror match. <laughs> There's like nobody on the server, so I'm fighting my, my old ghosts right now. Um, let's see, we got Octopus. You can see these items are scaling up now. Their, their effect is a lot stronger than it was early in the game. Can't really fit any of those things. Let's go to Andy and see if it's a small item. So if I grab these weapons, it's gonna wreck my sniper rifle. And Sanjiri rounds burns them, but I'm not really trying to like do tick damage over time. I'm trying to like snipe them and just burst them out in one shot. Um, let's see, we have a coconut to regenerate. I think I'm just gonna gain a gold instead and see if we can get something better. Now nah, these are all weapons. We don't really want weapons. All right, well, we don't have all of our row filled up, but I don't think it's too big of an issue against the monster. It should be pretty easy. Scaling up, every fight that happens, the lighthouse goes off again. So, I mean, now the cooldown on sniper rifle is down to seven seconds. On water wheel, it's also about seven seconds. It was pretty good so far. Ooh, powder flask, disguise. Let's just take another powder flask. It doesn't work, but I can sell it for some money. Ooh, we got pearl. It sells for two, and when you sell it, it upgrades an item. So, I like the sound of that. Let's go ahead and sell this pearl and see what we get. We upgraded Lighthouse, sure. Uh, I don't really want to sell anything to fit these items, so I'm just gonna keep going. Ooh, maybe Coral, maybe a Seashell. Start of the fight, gain 233 shield. It's pretty good. Probably better than recursively healing. My health is pretty low for this stage of the game compared to like other characters. So I think having a bit of extra shield could stop us from getting one shot, which would be pretty helpful. I'm just gonna keep scaling the sniper rifle because I can, why not? Uh, we're definitely gonna <laughs> change the balance of the game and the economy so that it's not possible to just get an item like way over your level. Like right now you can get like level 30 item, at, like level 12 if you get enough economy items. And um, we definitely wanna, 
Like, we want to have the upgrade event to kind of enable you to keep items that you really want to keep, but it shouldn't be used to, like, hyperscale your item and just have it carry you. Um, that being said, that's how it's balanced right now, and I'm here to get wins, so. I'm not going to let that stop me from going in on Sniper Rifle and seeing what happens. Pretty much all the other builds are, are pretty broken, too, at the uh, higher levels, so... You know, I gotta, I gotta be a little bit degenerate myself. Okay, let's see what this goblin has. A bullet in the face. This is like a very uninteractive build I made. I basically, okay, we have one item that does a ton of damage. It triples itself at the beginning of the fight. And then we have Powder Flask, which just uses it right away, right? And then what Lighthouse does is it keeps lowering this cooldown on each of these. So over the course of a long fight, we'll be able to get a lot of activations off. Um, so pretty much full degeneracy, uh, you know, the usual uh, you guys can expect. Okay, so I could switch my hero power out for one of these. I don't think I really want any of those items. I'd rather just have the cooldown reduction. So I'm just gonna go ahead and skip that. See, JJ doesn't have anything that fits. I'm doing like a very low churn rate build. I'm kind of keeping the same stuff throughout for you guys so you can get an idea of <laughs> ah, maybe some of the balance issues we have right now. Um, all right, let's keep stacking this sniper rifle. Maybe I'll do a fair run where I build a more reasonable build next time, but who knows. I've never played sniper rifle before, so I want to give it a shot. Okay, now we got to make a choice. Do we want to keep the seashell, which is going to give us some armor at the beginning of the fight, some shield? Uh, if I do sell it, I can upgrade Sniper Rifle one more time, which is pretty tempting. Because that attack power is going to triple. I think I'm going to do that. I think that matters more than like a little bit more armor. I mean, if I get one shot, I'm going to regret it, but... I mean, it's like a 600 damage buff, you know, it's got to be worth it. I think this damage has outscaled the player health on most builds at this point, so we should hopefully one-shot people. Fun and interactive. The way digital card games are meant to be. Maybe we'll re-record another game for you guys after this. I don't know if this is the impression I want to give you of what the game is. But as part of the fun of early builds is uh, everything's degenerate, you know? All right, what do you have, Andy? He has a jellyfish when I get hit days two. All right, I'm down. I really like the jellyfish art. It's actually one of my favorites. All right. Ooh, Infernal can survive the first shot. But can he survive the next four? Probably not. Eh, yeah, more stuff I don't want. What does Pole have? Hmm. Give some other items dual cast. I'm not really feeling any of these. I think we're just gonna go ahead and skip. We go to Andy. Yeah, jellyfish, citrus. Do we really want any of these things? Maybe. Maybe. I think citrus is actually better. It cleanses us if we take too much damage. So I don't know if somebody like stun locks us or um, maybe if we're just like burning too much, that could bail us out of a fight. Like, honestly, if a fight goes pretty long, we're in a good spot, because the cooldown on these items is so low now that just the, the damage output is ridiculous. Um, but all good. I'm just going to keep being degenerate and hoping for the best. Hopefully we don't queue into another build that's equally uh, troublesome. We really wanted to get this update video out to you guys this week, so that's part of the reason... Um, it's a little misbalanced. I think, you know, a week from now, it'll be a lot cleaner. And I might even stream some games for you guys uh, just early in development so you get an idea of how the build evolves week to week. Definitely want to get back into doing that more often. Um, but yeah, okay, we got a better lighthouse if we want to upgrade that. Go from 19% reduction to 25. I mean, why not? I'm just kind of committed to this, uh, this strat now. Wow, Ballista is spicy at this point, too. Yeah, I mean, nothing's gonna... Nothing's gonna beat the insanity of the build I have going on right now. Um, I'm just gonna keep skipping these. Alright, Medusa. Good game. 
<laughs> Alright, maybe we'll record another game for you guys uh, that's a little bit more balanced. Maybe I'll do a more interactive build. Uh, let's see, we got Kev. Alright, what are we gonna level up? Sniper rifle? 2k attack, not bad. Okay. All right, seven and one. Ooh, okay, okay. Rainad has more health than us. Oh no, he's gonna bot me with the stick. All right, let me let me replay that for you guys so you get a better idea of what happened. So he has Phonograph here, it's gonna use the item to the left. He has this infinite damage longbow that's stacking, infinite damage lion's cane that's stacking. These belts give more HP. Ah, you know what this is? This is, <laughs> this ghost is saved from an early build of the game when these belts were more broken. Uh, they used to have this bug where they would continually stack max health, which is how it got to this ridiculous <laughs> 500,000 number. Um, yeah, fuck me, I guess. All right, seven, two. I see this is why this is why I don't feel too bad about doing the sniper rifle build. Some of these late game builds are just nutty. All right, I'm not sure about keeping this uh, lighthouse around either. It might just be better to get a different large item that's maybe gonna help us defend a little more. Uh, well, let's see, where, where are we at in the day? We still have a monster fight coming up. So I think I'm gonna keep this lighthouse at least until the monster fight, so I get one more cooldown trigger. But it's still worth going into these merchants, seeing if there's anything worth picking up. All right, we killed the goblin, our cooldowns are reduced once again. We got one second cooldowns now, feels good, man. Um, I don't think we want either of these things. On the other hand, if I'm selling this, might as well do it now, get one more gold from an extra item to sell. Let's see what Pole has. Ooh, he's got a better water wheel. At least it would be better if uh, if this one wasn't permanently reduced so much. Um, I don't think I'm really feeling any of these items. Like the extra water wheel, I don't know if it'll really help. I mean, maybe it will. Like sell this thing, have a water wheel trigger a water wheel. It is pretty spicy. I mean, technically, it's better to do it in this order, right? Because this one has the lower cooldown. So this will use the right item twice. Which, and since this has dual cast, it'll get used four times. Yeah, I think this is better. Let's see what Kina has. Uh, some cooldown reduction, some chum. I don't think we need any of this. All right, JJ. Uh, more seashells. Yeah, whatever. Just upgrade my seashell. All right, level up zone. Let's get a stacked sniper rifle. You guys can see the leveling starts to get a little exponential towards the end, so each upgrade is very spicy. Let's get into a fight and hopefully kill this opponent in the first second. Ooh. <laughs> the double yo-yo build. Um, man, I can't believe I beat this build. That used to be the hardest one in the game to beat. Ah, it's because even though I'm frozen, the Powder Flask still goes off at the beginning of the fight. Freezing just stops the charging. It doesn't stop the automatic uses. So luckily you got sniped. But if I didn't have this Powder Flask, I would be stun locked and then get killed by yo-yos. All right, what else do we have? Eh, I don't really want these. What does Pull have? Eh, not really feeling that either. Let's see. No, my build's pretty set, to be honest. Like, I don't need too many changes to get stronger. I think I just want to get this sniper rifle up to max level and um, move on with my life. Could actually get rid of one of these water wheels, I guess, if we wanted to have more of, like, defensive items. Coral armor and octopus are actually pretty tempting here, because that's kind of what I'm weak to, right? Is, is just... strong builds. I wonder if coral armor could give me enough time to use sniper rifle more. I'm gonna try it. 
Let's sell this lower water wheel. Pick up coral armor. Normally I would sell the lower level water wheel, but this is the one that was getting uh, cooldown reduced by Lighthouse for so many turns that it's actually better than high level water wheels at this point. Make sure my items are all lined up. This water wheel needs to trigger the thing on the right. This needs to trigger the thing on the left. Um, let's see. Let's see what Andy has. Not impressed, Andy. Um, ooh. Could go back to the lighthouse life. When you use a weapon, gain 233 shield. That might be pretty good, actually. I mean, it's a, at the very least, it's better than these uh, things, I think. I don't know, this gives 1400 armor. It's pretty good. Ah, who knows? Let's try it. Let's see what Barrel does for us. Probably shouldn't have gone to Ayla. I don't really need more weapons. All right, we got our last upgrade in for a sniper rifle. The max level is 30 right now on items. I'm gonna go ahead and uh, upgrade this coral armor because um, I think we need a good defensive item. I wonder what happens if I upgrade this water wheel. I hope it doesn't mess up my cooldown. Okay, test it. I hope it's still one second. 0.6 seconds. The work is intended. I'm shocked. Hmm. Oh man, maybe maybe I should be upgrading that more often. All right. It's the yo-yo build again. He applied. I know it's a little hard to follow because everything's like beginning of fight triggers. Basically, he froze me for 18 seconds, trying to stun lock me and then kill me with an infinite yo-yo loop. But. I can't take damage because my his yo yo's are too weak to get through my armor. And this powder flask triggers the sniper rifle, even though I'm frozen. And he can't survive the 23,000 damage shot. You can see how the numbers get pretty ridiculous at the end. Uh, we actually like the hyperscaling, it's, it's pretty fun, but uh, you know, I definitely think that uh, we're going to rebalance kind of the way items scale so that, you know, the early upgrades will feel more impactful. Um, and I mean, late game might still be ridiculous numbers. I don't know, it's kind of fun to do trillions of damage, you know. Yeah, I don't really want any of these. Let's see what Pull has. No, we don't need that stuff. We're pretty good. We have a lot of armor. We're sniping things. Have this uh, cool little defensive sniper rifle build going. Let's go ahead and get into the last fight. Uh, actually, should I just be upgrading this water wheel more? Let's do it. Let's see what happens with one more upgrade. 0.1 seconds, holy. So what happens if I do it one more time? I hope it doesn't crash the server. Zero second cooldown, oh shit. Okay, zero second cooldowns might crash the server. <laughs> we'll see. Uh, early production environment gameplay. If I click ready and nothing happens, we broke it. I'm 9 and 2. This is day 12. This is the longest a run can possibly last. Win or lose, my run is over after this fight. Please don't break the game. No opponent yet. That scares me. It worked. I think I did like 1 billion damage. Every zero seconds, Water Wheel activates Sniper Rifle two times, dealing 50,000 damage per zero seconds. It's a pretty good build. We take those. Obviously, we need a lot of rebalancing. Probably can't do permanent CDR. Um, but yeah, I mean, uh, it's a basic run. I, I did kind of speed through stuff and I. I went with a build that doesn't have a lot of churn, so I kind of bought some stuff and then held it for a long time. Uh, just in terms of like design philosophy, we, we kind of want to encourage people to keep changing their build. It's more fun when you have to keep adapting on the fly. All right, so I want to show you guys another run really quickly, maybe where I draft some more uh, interactive cards, show you how combat's really supposed to play out. Uh, I mean, since I'll be playing fairly, uh, <laughs> might not go as well. Might be a quick run, but... I do want to show you how the fights look when 
people don't just die on the first second. So I have my option of three different merchants to go to. Uh, who do we like the most? Let's, let's try Kev. I like Kev. All right, T-Set can start stacking max health. Chocolate bar is a consumable, meaning it's a one-time use item. After it's used, it, it's gone forever. Um, got Succulents, which kind of keeps healing more and more throughout a fight. I'm going to go ahead and pick up T-Set. T-Set's a, a fun item. All right, so we can pick up some weapons here. I like Lion's Can. It keeps automatically leveling itself up. Hmm. Boomerang's pretty good, too, though. Boomerang can be really good if we get another weapon. We do have one more merchant coming up before the first monster fights. So I'm going to take a bit of a risk here, pick up a Boomerang. Go to JJ one more time. And what do we got? Atlas Stone. Regal Blade. Hmm. Gavel. It's a tough call. I think I might just pick up Safe. I got a good feeling. Maybe. Wow, well, man, if I don't get a weapon in there, though, I'll never be able to kill the monster. Wouldn't that be embarrassing? Losing to the first one. It actually happens a lot. They're pretty strong right now. Let's take a gavel. If the monster attacks me a lot, at least we can deliver justice. Alright, so boomerang's an ammo item. So until I use another weapon, it won't reload. Um, but yeah. Going okay so far. This boulder is gonna fuck me up when it charges fully. I mean, luckily it's just a one-time use item. But yeah, I feel good about it. Fight started, we got some extra max health. That's gonna help us scale throughout the entirety of the game. Let's keep shooting some bubbles as we can. I think the, the cooldowns on these early items are going to be balanced so they're a lot faster, so these early fights won't take nearly as long. Also, I mean, this enemy has a, a good chunk of health for an early fight as well. But yeah, taking some damage. I, I think, by the way, the game right now has a hard stop at like 60 seconds, and then the fight just ends, and whoever has more health wins. Um, and that will not be what the game is in the final build. See, like here it's ending just because we ran out of time. But in the final game, uh, there will be like... A, some, it'll be a fight to the death every time. Most likely it'll be like a sandstorm that comes in, starts damaging both players more and more and more. So eventually somebody dies, but um, yeah, we won our first fight. I feel good about it. Let's pick up this hatchet. Seems like it might be a good item. Uh, it buffs the left weapon plus three. Okay. All right, what hero power do we want? Cooldown reduction, some extra money, a buff to our healing and shielding effect. I don't really have healing and shielding effects yet. This can be pretty strong, actually, if I pick some up. And I'm gonna have a lot of chances to do that. I have some merchants coming up here, so I'm gonna get defensive. Now let's go to Kev to work with that. All right, we got Ice Cream Truck. This artwork's not finished yet, not polished yet, but I'm a big fan of Ice Cream Truck. Um, let's see, bandages. So, I mean, with this hero power, it's actually really strong. Bandages heals me for seven every time I get hit. It's pretty crazy, especially at early levels. I and mean, you can see how weak these items are. Um, that might be a pretty good two-card combo to start things off. I'm going to get bandages here instead of succulents to go with my hero power. I think we need some better damage, so I'm going to go to Ayla, see if we can get another weapon. Ooh, two boomerangs. Now, that's pretty cool because they can reload each other, I think. After you use another weapon, reload this. So maybe I just get two of these. And I can like sell my other weapons. Just go like full defense, double boomerang. That could be good. We got some healing items here. Could grab succulents, could grab snow globe. Snow globe freezes them for two seconds, but it takes 12 seconds to charge up. And it's a medium item. It takes up a lot of space compared to these other ones. I think I'm gonna go ahead and um, pick up succulents. Man, it's kind of tempting to get truffles. It's kind of like succulents. They both heal me on a cooldown, but truffles I can sell back later on. Oh, let's get truffles. That sounds better, actually. We'll make the uh, economy play. So what do we want to be upgrading now? We could upgrade this T-set so we start gaining more max HP per fight, or I could upgrade these boomerangs so that we do way more damage uh, right out of the gate. Let's, let's buff T-set up. I want to be an absolute unit. Can. I'm going to move this axe over here so we start buffing up our boomerangs. Um, and yeah, I mean, let's actually, I don't have enough money to, to upgrade T set again. Hmm, I could sell truffles to upgrade T set now, but then we, we don't have that healing item during the fight. 
I'm pretty sure we're gonna we're, we're, we're strong for early game. I'm gonna go ahead and upgrade this one more time. I want to get more max health early because every time my hero levels up, I get uh, a percentage uh, more max health. So like the earlier I start scaling that, the more max health I'm gonna have in the end game. All right, so we're gonna find an opponent. Ooh, sniper rifle. I swear, wait, that's me from the last run we did. We still have a bit of a uh, issue with the way we're saving ghosts on the server. It'll get fixed the next couple days, but there'll be a way bigger variety of ghosts, uh, at least while we're in this early production stage. Uh, but when you guys play the game, there will be billions of people who have downloaded it. So you'll be playing against real players in real time every single fight. All right, moving forward. Kev, what do we have? Extra max health. Extra, well, this is like temporary max health, right? It's like as long as I own the belt, I have more HP. Whereas like chocolate bar gives me a permanent max health buff one time if I eat it. Let's grab a chocolate bar. I, it's like my favorite item. I never pass chocolate bar. I'm a big snack enthusiast. Okay, so grindstone's pretty cool. I really like these items that permanently scale. They're pretty fun. Let's go ahead and sell these weapons because they're pretty low level. These little ones that aren't doing much. Let's take grindstone and put it in the middle of these boomerangs. We have this like double boomerang combo that can keep chaining up. Hmm, could get a second T set, which is tempting. I mean, it is tempting. I like the. I mean, I like these bandages with the hero power that we have. Hmm. It's so greedy to go for double T set. Plus, I'd have to sell Chocolate Bar to do it. I mean, at least for the next fight, it's not going to get me more HP. Yeah, I think I'm just going to go ahead and hold off on buying these things. Just go to the Void Lord. All right. He's got some weapons. Didn't exactly position him right, but... Should be a nice, easy NPC fight for us. All right. Boomerangs are gonna bop them. Doing pretty good so far. Hmm. Ooh, level five T set. I'm not gonna pass that. That's too spicy. Let's get rid of these bandages now. We got we got a T set up. Um. Hmm. Could lower the cooldown on some stuff. I mean, that's not the worst. Could get Caltrops, which is pretty good against like builds that attack us quickly. I think we have a lot of max health going. This is a bit low level now. Let's go ahead and sell this T-Set and pick up a Caltrops. Just in case we fight against like a Vanessa build that is really fast. Uh, let's see, we can get some cooldown reduction, some armor stuff. I think I'm just gonna go ahead and skip this as well. Pretty happy with how this build is playing out. Silk could be pretty good. Let's get Silk. It's gonna make my opponent's weapons weaker. So it's a decent defensive item, but when we are ready to sell it, it sells for double, so I think I like that. It might be worth it to start upgrading, like, Grindstone, actually. We could upgrade the Boomerangs, and they basically start doing more damage, but I think it's just better to upgrade this Grindstone, because it's going to give bigger and bigger permanent buffs every single fight, which seems pretty spicy. All right. <clears throat> Let's see who we queue against. All right, we're fighting Tali. It's a lot of weapons for him, but we have a lot of health. And look at the work the Silk is doing. He has a full board of weapons, so this is reducing like a billion damage. I would already be dead by now without it. All right, and then we boomerang him out. All right, Silk was pretty good there. It's nice to see the defensive items uh, putting in work. Uh, let's see what Kev has. Hogwash. Hmm. I don't think I want any of these. I kind of like this. What we have. Ooh. I don't like it enough to pass up on a chocolate bar, though. Let's go to Andy. Get something small. Hmm. Matchbox could up our DPS quite a bit. Start burning him for six every time these uh, boomerangs go off. It's pretty good. 
Maybe I'll just get truffles. It's a decent healing item. I mean, I got this hero power to help me heal, but I'm not, I don't really have many healing items. Hmm. I got a good feeling about Matchbox. Let's grab that. Burn them out. More DPS. Never hurt. Me. Alright. So, you guys kind of see, like, when weapons charge up, stuff's going off over and over again. This is a better... Uh, this is, like, more indicative of how fights play out. Ooh, a higher level T set. I didn't even have time to use the chocolate bar last fight. Hmm. The struggle. Alright, I'm just gonna go ahead and sell this old T set and get a higher level one. Let's go to JJ, see what he has. He's got silk. Silk is pretty good before. Ooh, we could upgrade a boomerang. It's not much of an. <laughs> it's a one damage upgrade because grindstone's been going to town on those. And the cooldown's the same. Hmm. Should we sell this chocolate bar? Nah. We could get a third boomerang though. That's kind of spicy. Maybe that would have been the play actually. I don't know. All right, Ayla doesn't really have anything I want. It's key to have. Ooh, higher level grindstone. That could be good. Decent silk. Piggy bank. Play the economy game a little bit more. Hmm. <laughs> well, I think I'm just going to go ahead and upgrade this, uh, this grindstone. And now that we're here, ready to level more stuff up. What do you, what do you think we should level more? Uh, I think maybe this T set, actually. Let's get more max health. So it used to do like 70 max health, now it's 90. What is this going to give us? 112, we take those. Okay, yeah, sure, level 10 T set. Let's do this. It'll go really well with this chocolate bar. It's a nice snack. Alright. So we've got the sniper build. Oh no, I'm gonna get bodied. Please don't kill me. Oh, I'm getting dazed. Oh. Absolutely demolished. Oh, interesting. My, my boomerangs didn't reload themselves. Probably because I got frozen. Or actually, maybe it's because Chum triggered their use. Chum hard counters double boomerang. It's definitely a bug. We'll fix that. Why else would I lose, right? Alright, let's get a big item. I want something spicier. Cooldown reduction. Item level ups. I don't want to sell this tea set. I mean, I don't really want to sell these boomerangs or this grindstone. Maybe going to pole was not such a good idea. He does sell big things after all. Let's see, we could get more weapons, could get a chocolate bar. Man, I'm still like paranoid about keeping against Chum again because of that bug. Let's get chocolate bar, whatever. Um, let's actually see if there's like a faster cooldown weapon. Maybe I can just on the off chance that happens again, we can like reload our boomerangs after the fact. All right, so Grindstone's gonna keep buffing our weapons. We're gonna mess this goblin up. Oh, he is, it does hurt a little bit. All right, so we're doing pretty well. I mean, we're scaling. We have a lot of scaling items, right? T-Set is buffing our max health aggressively every fight. Keep in mind, you also level up after every fight. That's what this blue number indicates. So I'm level eight right now. Every time you level up, you also get more max health. Uh, and then every fight, this grindstone is making these weapons stronger. So even though they're not leveling up, they are getting more permanent attack. Uh, whenever you use an item, regen seven. I don't have like that many items going off. Uh, regeneration, by the way, is like the reverse of burn. So, you, you know, you gain seven health per second, then six health, then five health, then four health. Every tick, it goes down. Uh, I'm gonna go ahead and skip that. Oh, wait, why did I skip that? That was free. You should have definitely grabbed the weapon. Oh, well. Um, hmm. Yeah, let's do cooldown reduction. That sounds like exactly what we want right now. Let's get rid of this ivory tusk. It's gonna buff one of my weapons when I sell it. Uh, or at least it should, did it? Hopefully. Um, and yeah, let's get a belt. I just want to be tanky, you know? I, I think we are doing good on damage thanks to Grindstone buffing up these boomerangs over and over. 
I'm actually gonna swap the grindstone out for a higher level one here. Uh, let's see what Kina has. No, I'm not really in the market for that stuff. I think I just want to be a T set player this run. Let's just stack T set and see what happens. 200 HP per fight. All right, it's gonna work well with his belt. All right, let's see what happens. Yeah, I think we'll be fine here. So he's, he's got an Atlas Stone build. He's gonna try to keep doubling the damage that that deals. Uh, so if the fight goes really long, he'll definitely crush me. This just does infinite damage. See, now it's doing 200, then it's gonna do 400, then 800. Oh, it's so painful. Please get boomeranged out. No! No, fuck. 48 HP. I got so fucking close. Yeah, health stacking is not good against Atlas Stone, that's for sure. Well, that's what I get for playing fair. But yeah, hopefully this gives you guys an idea uh, more of, uh, you know, how the game's supposed to play out. Uh, I'm excited to just keep putting out more update videos for you guys. We're going to keep improving these systems drastically, and I think it's going to be an incredible game when it's done. I think it's already really fun. We've, you know, we're actually just playing for fun uh, outside of work, too. And um, yeah, if you guys have questions, ask them in the comments. If we messed up and you think we've ruined the game and you wish it was a deck builder instead and all this other stuff, let us know. Um, I definitely would love to just hear any and all feedback that you have about any systems or anything that you've seen. And uh, yeah, appreciate you guys watching. We'll see you back here on another Friday for another update video of The Bazaar.